Are you someone who is into podcasts? Perhaps you want to have a really cool library where you can find some great podcasts to listen to on your commute to work. Or maybe you're looking to create one yourself. Well, let me tell you about Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast, all right? It's free. It has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your PC. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you, complete ease, hassle-free, so that way you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, as well as many more outlets. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Okay, folks? You, everything you need to make a podcast in one place. It's fantastic. All right? And if you want to get started right now, all you got to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of Just a Glimpse and this segment I'm going to be talking about the Outriders demo. Now this is the big game. This is the talk of the town. This is what everybody on Twitter within the gaming community is talking about right now and I waited until now to talk about it because the the demo came out on Thursday. It is now Monday. All right for those of you who might listen to this later. I wanted to make sure I gave people ample time to go ahead and test out the demo uh, before I go ahead and I start discussing it because I'm going to rip this apart and I'm going to, you know, have all the spoilers. So if you haven't tried the demo or maybe you don't want to and you're waiting for the full release because you want you don't want to be spoiled until the full release, then I'm giving you that warning right now. You're going to get spoiled. All right. So come back when you're ready and give this a listen. All right. I also want to make a disclaimer. I am not at any moment trying to tell people how to feel about this game. Everyone has their own right, your own tastes, your own dislikes and likes about things. And you can come up with your own opinion on what you like or dislike about this game. I am merely sharing my own personal perspective on what I, you know, how I feel about the Outriders demo based on the content of the game that was shared with us in this demo. Now, this does not uh, in no way going to shape the entirety of the game because we only saw such a small portion of the game. But if the rest of the game is going to be anything like the beginning portion of the game, then I already know how I'm going to feel about this game. Okay? That's all I want to say. I'm not trying to shape anybody else. I'm not telling you what you should what you should like. This is just me, how I feel. Now, I played the demo on PC. And I had intended to play it on Xbox, but that day Xbox Live was down. So I decided, you know, okay, I'll just play the PC version. No big deal. I have the luxury to where I own all the platforms, you know, so if Xbox Live is down or if PlayStation Network is down or whatever, if anything's down, I can, you know, I have the ability to just move over to a different platform. No big deal for me. I also want to mention, I do not have a top of the line PC, okay? I'm not running a 30 series graphics card in like an i9 processor. So I don't want people coming at me saying, well, you had these experiences because you have this top of the line, you know, Master Race PC. I do not. Okay. I have a 1080, all right, and an i7 processor. All right. I have a good PC. I do. I don't have any problems with my PC as of right now. But I know when it comes to the Master Race, everyone's going on about their 2070 Supers or their 30 series graphics cards. All right. And that's fine. But I do not have that. So please keep that perspective that I do not have that. All right. Now, anyways, so I I turned on this demo so I could play it with my friends. Uh, They were going to they're going to be playing it on Xbox. They had already as soon as the demo dropped at noon, 
on Thursday, they already started playing it. So they already got through their prologue and stuff. So they were ready. I, because I'm a streamer, and they are not, wanted to make sure I played the prologue on my stream. So that means now that the Xbox Live is down, I, you know, had to move over to PC. I had to spend a little extra time downloading it because I wasn't prepared to have to, you know, do it on PC. And anyways, then I got running, I went and I, I booted it up and I started playing through the, the prologue. Alright, so let's start the hair. Whew. I am a huge fan. Huge fan when it comes to sci-fi. I prefer sci-fi over fantasy. But I oftentimes will play more fantasy games because there are just more fantasy games than there are sci-fi games. And oftentimes, when they do do sci-fi games, they don't do it well. There are a few exclusions to the rule. You know, like I will say Mass Effect for, you know, when it comes to science fiction, they do a pretty good job, you know, showing different alien species and different planets and things. They do a decent job. I'm not saying they did amazing, but compared to the majority, they were pretty damn good. Okay? Now, that being said, Outriders is a sci-fi. Alright, the opening uh, scene starts out with a bunch of text describing to you that humanity has destroyed Earth. And now we are in pursuit of, tr- of trying to find a new planet to call home. Okay? Now let's just stop you right there. This is one of the most generic tropes in sci-fi. <laughs> Alright? There are a lot of generic things that come with sci-fi. But the old, we destroyed our planet and we need a new planet one, is so run-of-the-mill. So I'm reading this and I'm already starting to, you know, I already know what I'm going to expect. Because this has been done to death. Okay? So we keep going. They go on of talking about how you've been on this ship uh, for 83 years. And, you know, your people are in cryo and whatnot. And, like, that's fine. Again, this is, once again, run-of-the-mill. It's been done to death. This is, you know, I fine. And then your team gets to this planet called Enoch. Okay? And, <laughs> well, let me tell you my reaction when they, uh, when, you, when you get to this, pl- okay, first off, when you're approaching this planet, you see that there's, like, this giant storm coming. You can see, like, think of, like, when you look at Jupiter, like pictures of Jupiter, you know there's a giant storm where the eye of Jupiter is. It's flipping obvious. Well, they have that happening. You can see this massive storm on this planet. And we still decide to go and land on this planet. Okay? We get to this planet. I had to take a double take. Are you sure? We left Earth? Are you sure? Because I'm looking around, and this planet looks like Earth to me, man. Like, if you're telling me we traveled for 83 years, you know, and we left our solar system, all right? You know, we probably left the Milky Way for all I know. And you're going to tell me that the first planet we come to that can support human life looks like a flippin' replica of the planet we left? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? There is no way, scientifically, out of the trillions and trillions and and trillions of uh, things that need to happen in evolution between plant life and animal life, Is this planet going to look identical to our planet? Okay. And so as a sci-fi fan, you know, I'm already super disappointed. 
because I'm like, okay, we're going to an alien planet. I should see, you know, a whole bunch of crazy plant life, you know, crazy plant life, you know, crazy animal life. You know, it should look, it, it, it should look alien because it is alien, but it looks like earth 2.0. All right, Um, you have the same kind of trees that we have on Earth. You know, you have like pine trees and and, and whatnot. You got, you know, regular green grass, like the rocks, everything. Everything just looks like you're on Earth. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just so taken aback and I'm so disappointed. I'm like, are you kidding me? You're gonna open up this story to us traveling through the galaxy, trying to find a home. And you're going to convince me that we didn't leave Earth? Because as far as I'm concerned, you lied to everybody and this is freaking Earth. Um, you, you, <laughs> so you get off your shuttle because you're basically like the scouting team to make sure the planet is safe for the main mothership to come down where the rest of the human population is still in cryo, right? Remember... We came from outer space. We saw it as a huge storm. But, you know, we're not going to pay any attention to that. No, 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 no. That's a minor detail. So we're going to get, we get off our shuttle. The landing from our shuttle created fire. And you could see, you know, trees burning in the perimeter around where our shuttle landed. Okay. And then we just hop in our, you know, our trucks or whatever. I don't know what they call these trucks. Think of like the Mako from Mass Effect, only larger scale versions. It's basically that. So we get in these trucks and we start rolling away. And I, I made a comment when I saw that. And I was like, oh, look at that. Humans land on new planet. We, we know we, we already got the planet on fire. And instead of, you know, being considerate, trying to care about and preserve this planet, we're just going to leave a burn as we leave. Because that's exactly what we did. We have, <laughs> we literally started a wildfire and we just drove away. I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, good job, human. Good good job, human race. Okay. So we drive away. We go home and we make camp. You have some character interaction, you know, because, you know, everything's on a, stre- on a timeline. We got to hurry, hurry, hurry. We got to scout this planet. We got to make sure everything is good to go so we can bring the rest of our people here. Fine. Whatever. <sighs> You go through the whole tutorial process. I don't have an issue with the tutorial process for the most part because, I mean, games have tutorials. Fine, you're going to show us how to run. You're going to show us how to take cover. You're going to show us how to use the weapons. Fine. I don't have an issue with that. You start exploring the planet further. They send you off to go and find some probes. And you see some wildlife. They show scenes of, like, birds flying. Those birds look like the same birds we have on Earth. So we don't even have alien birds. Legit look like I was looking at cranes and seagulls. You kidding me? We go further in. You see us, there's going to be a scene of, like, this deer-like creature that runs through. Kind of like... Think of, like, any kind of grazing deer that you would see, whether it's out, out west here in the States or if you look out in Africa or whatever. If you want to compare it to, like, gazelles or to elk, I don't care. Um, so think of that, okay? It definitely, it doesn't look like a splitting image of, let's say, an elk, but it's not that far off, so it doesn't look that alien. Yes, it doesn't look like ours, but it doesn't look alien enough. I'm not happy with it. We'll put it that way. I am not happy with the fact that now this also isn't alien enough for me. And then they show us another um, creature that lives here. You know, it looks like this giant primate kind of animal that is kind of also like a buffalo, I guess, you know. And um, so think of like a buffalo mixed with I guess, like a giant uh, gorilla. And they go on about how that they're not dangerous, they're, 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 they're herbivores, whatever, and you see them, you know, running in like a mass, uh, uh, 
Mm, what's the word? You know when you when you watch um, documentaries of of animals, either whether it's bison or or herding animals in let's say Africa, like the wildebeests, and like they'll they'll run in like that mass group, you know, like kind of like their herd, and um, they're not really stampeding. Well, I guess in the game they're kind of stampeding. Well, you know, that's kind of what's happening. So they're like they're stampeding through. All right, fine, whatever. You go to this probe, you get, you know, you, you, you check that out, they tell you to go to another probe, fine, whatever. Get to this next probe. You start talking about this frequency and how it isn't responding to our ship because we thought, you know, there was some kind of message coming in from our ship. No. You make, you, you tell them that it is communicating with something else on the planet outside of our search perimeter. Okay? So this is important. So that means there either has to be leftover alien technology that is that was left running and is interacting with this probe or there is alien an intelligent alien species living on this planet. Um still and they have uh, stuff that is interacting with this probe. They don't go into any detail of this. This is stuff that I can draw conclusions of on my own because I've seen enough sci-fi to know that this is it's going to be one of these two, right? It would make sense. They don't go into any of this detail. Anyways, guess what? A storm starts coming in. And it starts creating interference with your intercom. So you can't get the frequency... Uh, relayed back. So you just pull a marker out of your pocket, which I don't know anybody who keeps a marker on them at standard procedure, <laughs> you know, especially a military individual who keeps a marker in their back pocket, like a, a regular soldier. But anyways, you take this giant freaking marker out and you write this code on your left hand. Okay, your left hand. Storm comes in, things are getting crazy. You hear people screaming because now all of a sudden your intercom is working well enough to hear people screaming, but it doesn't you work well enough for you to, you know, say a couple numbers. Whatever. You know, issues that I have with the game already that, you know, are going to be minute to most people that will be overlooked. But I am, uh, I- I'm looking at this as this is just complete BS. You run back, the storm is creating mass devastation. Mass devastation. It's tearing trees down, you know, it's completely shifting the tectonic plates of the planet where you see, like, the, like, the ground is coming, is, like, literally coming up and, 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 like, it's just ridiculous, okay, it's absolutely ridiculous, and I'm sitting here thinking, we have a lot of really bad storms here on Earth, tornadoes, hurricanes, things that will uproot trees, right? Earthquakes will come and they'll shift the ground. But to this extent, this is like getting hit with a massive earthquake at the same time as getting hit by, you know, a hurricane. Hurricane force winds, no rain, just hurricane force winds and like an earthquake, you know, bringing the the, the ground up. And then you have, like, this crazy, like, lightning storm. And I'm just sitting here thinking, if these storms are at at this severe, how is there still vegetation on this planet, let alone, how are there still animals living on this planet? Like, this is very destructive. Um, We're talking, like, that it disintegrates everything. Destructive. Disintegrates. Okay. (sighs) Anyways, people are dying. You get struck by lightning. It doesn't kill you. You get back to camp. People are upset. You're you're panicking. You're trying to get survivors together. There's an argument. Bullets are shared. You go off after somebody. I'm not going to go into too much detail. More bullets are shared. Mass explosion. You get caught in the explosion. Medics come to pick up the remaining wounded, including your character. 
the the medic is like, yo, <laughs> things are bad. We're gonna put you back in cryo because only a doctor is gonna be able to save you. So we're putting you on ice because you're gonna die. All right, fine. Then it cuts forward. Okay, you got people pulling you out of cryo. And the first thing they do is they they ask you what you are you from. They start asking you for a frequency code. Immediately. The first thing they ask you for is the frequency code that you wrote on your hand. And what are you doing while they're asking you this? You are on your hands and knees, right? You're on your hands and knees with your left hand stretched out. Your, Your palm of your left hand in this dude's face for him to clearly see as he's asking if you have this code. And now you don't have a code on your hand. You're waving your hand around in his face. He sees no code. I see no code. This important code that he is looking for, you no longer have at this very moment. For this cutscene alone, that code no longer exists for a moment. And then you get further in the game, some more craziness happens. There's a war that's going on between people. And then they, you know, they explain to you that it's, you know, that everything went to hell and 31 years have passed and you've been on ice the whole time and you know what has also not happened you haven't died since you've come out of cryo you haven't died you went in there with you know probably severe traumatic internal injuries that you were near death from and and you walk out completely healed okay that makes me start to wonder like what the heck they throw you in basically this no man's land and tell you, you know, good luck. You know, you're, they, they're, they're pretty sure you're going to die. You go through here. A piece, uh, the storm comes back again. And a piece of rebar completely goes through your body. You are impaled. Impaled. Okay? It, that does not kill you. You pull it out. You see that your body heals up. You know, think of like Wolverine. You know, you have like this mass regen. You heal up. I'm like, okay, you know, that can explain why you are not dead from your past injuries from before you went in the cryo, you came out of cryo, you thawed out, your new abilities healed you there, and now you got healed now. Fine. So that means you have regen. From what they're showing us anyway, right? But then it, but then it was also kind of weird because... The hole that the rebar made in your outfit also healed up. So I'm like, now that's a little much. They could have, if they wanted to go, they could have gotten a little extra mile, in my opinion, and left the hole in your armor. You're not even wearing armor. You're wearing like your underclothes underneath your, your, what would be your armor. And that got sewed up too on its own. So that kind of like threw me off a little. You go, and you eventually find your way into into what they call, uh, I think it's called Rift Town. It's going to be your central hub for this game. You, you find some people that you knew back before you got, when you got put on ice, and you have interactions. You tell them that you have, they're telling you tell them about this code because you still have this code. Once again, it now ma- is magically on your hand again. It, you know, you you wrote it down. It disappeared. It came back. You tell them about this code. They go on about how super important this code is. And on multiple occasions, they'll send you out on quests. And you come back, and they'll still keep going on about how important this code is. And this is where I have to stop. How are you? How are you going to tell me this code is so damn important? So damn important. And not a single one of these people wrote this code down after I showed it to them. Not a single one. You're telling me this is world-saving, you know, super story important, and you're not going to write this down. Instead, you're going to continuously send me out in the field in dangerous scenarios where I could die, and you would once again lose this code forever. That makes more sense to you than them actually writing this damn code down and using it? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me?
You guys. The story for this game. So far. Just for this demo alone. I'm not even going to have to go into too much more detail about the storyline in this game. Uh, because. This is the most generic. Lazy. Story writing. I have seen in a long time. The story is terrible. Yes, it's just the demo. We're only seeing a small part of it. But the small part that I have seen so far is terrible. Terrible. It's riddled with plot holes. Yeah, they can probably, you know, go and they can, you know, throw some crap into this main game later to try to pass it off as good writing. But no, this is terrible. Okay? When, when, you're, when you're playing this game, you heal based on kills. So you kill somebody, you heal. That just contradicts everything that you just showed us. You just showed us that when we get injured, we self-heal instantly, like freaking Wolverine from Marvel, and now you're going to tell me we don't have regeneration unless we kill somebody? So now you just created a contradiction. That's bothersome to me. Okay, that's bothersome to me. And then in the storyline, on multiple occasions, multiple occasions, they are going to refer to those who have been uh, changed by the storm, like your character has, as altered. Fine, calls altered. We are altered. Uh, But in multiple occasions, they refer to these uh, individuals as being immortal. Immortal. Okay? And that would make sense if we are like Wolverine and we can keep, you know, mass healing and we don't die from severe injuries. That would make sense. We would be immortal. But then they contradict themselves yet again when they send us out there and we're killing them like they're no, like they're, like they're, we're just out there slaughtering these, these altered. How are you going to go and tell, tell me that the altered are immortal and then I can die? Because it's a video game and your character should die. You shouldn't just be, you know, impervious and in god mode. But I die. So clearly I'm not immortal. All the other altered on the field that I'm killing, they're definitely not immortal. I know because I just blew them up. So that bothers me. Do not use words like immortal if everyone's still dying. That is That just drives me nuts. These people are not immortal. If you want to say that they're, you know, hard to kill or they have, like, crazy health regeneration skills, fine. But the moment you say they're immortal, they're basically godlike and they cannot die. None of that is true in this game because they are not godlike and they definitely die. So that upsets me. When it comes to science fiction, it's super lazy. Super lazy, like I said. There's no alien life on this planet. You know, the, the, the animals that are there are the, 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 the bison, like, primate dude was the most alien thing we saw for the, for the first part of it, right? And then the birds, they didn't even look alien, and the deer thing didn't look that alien. So those were lazy. The vegetation is so dang lazy. I, like I said, if, if someone had walked in to my room while I was playing this game, I bet you, if I had not told them I was on another planet, they would have thought that I was fighting on Earth and some crazy stuff was going down on our planet. That's how lazy they were. The cover system in this game, which is a huge part of this game, because it was, you know, people can fly. They made Gears of War Judgment, so they're going to do the cover system. I have no problem with doing the cover system. I love Gears of War. I don't have a problem with doing the cover system. If it worked right, it doesn't even work right. The controls are so clunky in this game. I'll go, I'll, I'll run up the cover. I'll keep pushing A. Because I'm using a controller. Because like I said, I intended to play an Xbox. I went to PC. I still use the controller. Judge me if you want to. I don't give a flip. I'm going to use a controller. So I keep pushing A. Because they tell you to push A to go into cover. Sometimes I'll have to push it three, four times before you go into cover. And then to run from cover to cover, you have to wait for the prompt to show up on the other cover so you could hold A and then you could run to it. 
a lot of the times that prompt doesn't even show up. So I find myself just getting out of cover and just running there manually because the cover system isn't working. The only way you can, you know, and, and, and it's like Gears of War where you don't, there's no jump. So the only way you're going to get over obstacles is either you go around or you go into cover and then you crawl over said obstacle. Okay? But if you can't get into cover because you keep pushing the button to duck and to get into cover, then why am I even trying to get in cover? I can't get into cover. So I might as well just keep running around like I'm playing Call of Duty and never use cover and just, you know, go, you know, freaking gun crazy. And, and, and that's how I'm going to have to play because I can't get in the cover. When you're getting hit by a lot of enemies, you need to get in the cover now. Not after I click the button three, four times. I need to get in there now. So yeah, that's a problem. When you shoot at enemies, even in the tutorial when they're showing you how to use the weapons, you can get headshots without shooting them in the head. I was getting headshots shooting them in the shoulder. I was getting headshots doing chest shots. I was getting headshots when I was missing. What? Are you kidding me? You're going to tell me your gunplay is that bad? That is bad. If I can literally spray and pray, and I'm going all over the place, and I was still getting headshots, and I was missing, or I was, you know, shooting them in the chest, there'll be times I would just aim at their shoulder on purpose, and I still was getting headshots. This game is BS. Absolute BS. But again, everyone's overlooking that too. When you get different chests in the game, which is fine. You have your loot chests and you have your ammo chests. That's fine. An issue I have with these chests is they look too similar. I can't tell if I'm running towards loot or ammo unless I look at my mini map for that split second to see if there is a symbol on my map. Loot, there's no symbol. Ammo, there's like a bullet symbol. I should have to look at my mini map to know if I'm running towards ammo or not. I should be able to just be able to decipher that in the heat of battle whether or not that is ammo or loot. So to me, that those ammo boxes should be made smaller. And the loot boxes should be made to where they're more, a little bit more extravagant. You should know that that is for indeed, you know, you need to be able to distinguish between loot and ammo. You can't really distinguish it between them. Not in the heat of battle. You can't. They look too freaking similar. I ran past the loot in the heat of battle because I assumed it was ammo. And then I had people tell me, no, that was actually loot. So I went back and I got a shitty ass sniping rifle out of there and I moved on. Okay? You need to be able to tell them apart. People should be excited when they actually see a loot box. You know, okay, that chest is going to have loot in it. You should be excited to see that. You shouldn't be run up, oh look, I found loot. No, it's just ammo. That should not happen. I also noticed a lack of optimization in this game. Now, I played on PC. It looked great on PC. Even with my, you know, five-year-old computer, it looked good. Okay? My husband went and played it yesterday. And he played it on Xbox. That game does not look like what I played. It does not look like what I played. It was dropping frames. Constantly freezing up. It wasn't... When I was watching the birds in his game fly, their wings would disappear and come back. They were... There would be times I would see... The game would get pixelated and I would see actual, like, triangles. Triangles everywhere. This game is not optimized. It should not look that bad. If you cannot make it look good on the console, 
for last gen, then don't make it for last gen. This is the same problem we had with Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk was to a more radical extreme, but we're, you know, we're still getting there where this game does not look good on last gen consoles. So maybe don't make it for last gen consoles then and just make it for current gen. Make it just for the Series X and S and the PS5. Don't put it on the PS4 and the, and the Xbox One. Because from what I saw, it looked it looked terrible. Terrible. There is way too much motion blur in this game. I feel like everything is going too fast. If I'm running around on foot, why is the motion blur cranked up so high that when I'm running, it is as if I'm having the same experience if I was driving a car at high speed in this game. And I'm not kidding. The motion blur is way too high. And to make matters worse for me, There was not a single option, not a single one, for me to either turn down the motion blur or deactivate the motion blur. Okay? Motion blur tends to make me, you know, queasy at times. If I'm playing a car game, I'm fine. But if I'm running around, uh, if I'm running around with a person, it gives me headaches. I'll start to feel nauseous. And now I can't even turn it off. There are games that are 10, 20 years old that have the ability to turn it off. You're going to tell me this brand new game isn't, I can't turn that off? Come on. Please, please, please. Make sure you have the option to turn that off in the full release. Please make sure you have the option to turn it off in the full release. Okay. They remember to put a color blind mode in there, but they forgot the motion blur option. This game. I also feel is they're trying to do too much. They are taking components from Gears, which is fine. It makes sense because they made Gears Judgment. I'll let that slide. But they're also trying to be like Destiny. And they're also taking things from like Mortal Kombat. When you're using your special attacks, like I played the Trickster. When I use that Temporal Blade and everybody turns into skeletons all the dang time, I feel like I'm in constant x-ray mode on Mortal Kombat. Everyone's disintegrating before my eyes constantly. And it's just too much. It's cool to see it. But when it's happening every like five seconds because you have, you know, your cooldown is quick and you're constantly doing it all the time, it just becomes too much. It makes you feel like you're just too powerful. Okay? You are just starting out. You are just starting out. You barely got an idea of what's happening to your body. You have these new abilities of healing and and now you have these new abilities while it's your temporal blade or it's whatever your other classes get. And you're gonna tell me right off the gate you know how to use that stuff. And right off the gate, if you I can let that slide, you know how to use it fine. But right off the gate, it's gonna be so freaking powerful that I can run into a mass wave of enemies and I can kill like five, six of these dudes with one flipping hit. When I'm like a level one, two? No. No, 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 no. You are too powerful in the beginning. You should gradually get better. That makes you want to push to get better loot. So that way you can get stronger. If you are already so flipping strong at the very start of the game with no freaking loot. You don't even have armor yet in this in, at this point. You have zero armor. You have, you know, rusty weapons that are should be terrible because they're rusty weapons. And you're going to tell me I have a skill so powerful I don't even need guns. I can just go out there and wipe the entire battlefield at the start of the game when I'm like a level two? No. No. You're too powerful. That's not giving me incentive 
for anything because you already are basically giving me end game results at the start of the game. I am not happy with that. The guns. The guns. This game is like going to be a looter shooter. It is a linear one. It's not open service or anything like that. It's not a game of service. As far as I know. Um, maybe it is a game of service. I don't flip it now. Even if it is a game of service, it's linear. You go into an area and you have very confined uh, borders that you have to stay in. Okay? It is super linear. Okay? If this is going to be a game of service, it should not be that tight. You should have more freedom. Now, to me, it's not a game of service because of the lack of what they have in it. But... Even still, it is still designed to be a loot shooter. They drop loot. You have chests that give you loot. At your main hub, you have a stash for you to keep your loot. This is a loot-based game. And I have been told time and time again by a plethora of people over the last two years of how loot should be in a game because of all the disappointments they had with Anthem. I have been told to death on how loot systems should work. All right? I've heard it from all angles. And let me tell you, this game is not doing any of those things you were all preaching to me. And I am not hearing any of that consistency at all. You guys are all mad about the loot, you know, and the fact that there wasn't enough variety of weapons and this and that and the other thing. Well, guess what? They have like six different weapon types in this game. There is no variety. This is a loot-based game. When you do get different loot, guess what happens? <laughs> When you go to another place with your with your with your squad, and you get a thing, you get a chest, you get new loot, right? When we got to pick our thing, they, maybe we could finish the mission. They're like, "Hey, pick one of these three options." If even if we all three of us picked a different weapon, I picked shotgun, my one buddy picked the long rifle, and my other buddy picked the assault rifle. But guess what? Every time, every time, our guns would always look the same. We had the exact same skin. The exact same skin. How are you going to tell me that as we're progressing through this game, no matter what guns we get dropped or what guns we decide to pick over our, our, our teammates, we would always get the same skin? Yes, the skin was different from the previous gun, but my two buddies got the same gun skin on their gun. How? How are you going to have a loot, a loot based uh, shooter and we're getting the same weapons? And we're getting the exact same skins on our drops together. Okay? You, you should, we should all be getting random stuff. I should get a gun that looks one way, and they should get a gun that looks a completely different way. Not, we all get a, a weapon here, and we all have a rusty uh, thing on it. We go over here, we get a weapon, we all have a regular, like, gray metal look on it. Okay? We go further in, and we start getting other things. And there's no variety. There's no variety at all. The guns all look the same. You have six different guns, and what do they do? They have a, a, a few different skins, to you know, and then they go, and to make this gun seem special, they'll put, like, a buff on it that's going to boost one of your skills. Let's say my temporal blade, for example. Uh, instead of getting one temporal blade, I get to use it twice now. And that's it. That's it. For a Lupe shooter, the loot is crap. If I have to go off of all the feedback I've heard from people in the last two years on how loot should be, this game is none of those things that you guys have kept preaching about. It's none of those things. And I don't hear anybody complaining about the, the loot in this game. I haven't heard a single person. So, like, where's that energy, people? Where is that energy? Where is that consistency? How are you going to be super critical of how loot should be in one game and then another game you know, isn't hitting any of those keynotes you made, and, and I'm hearing crickets. Crickets! That's sending mixed messages to me as a player. I can't even imagine how it is for a developer who, you know, is looking at the feedback that players are giving to these other devs for this game, and now they're making their own game, and they don't want to make those mistakes. Okay, so they're doing their own thing, and they're not getting the same feedback for the same mistakes. That is a mixed message, and that is confusing. That is confusing. 
That's driving me nuts. This game. This game plagiarized. It blatantly plagiarized. No one has said a word. No one. Okay? Like I said, my husband played this game yesterday because he was curious. All right, because he heard me talking about this game and all the things I hated about it, and he was looking at it, and all he saw was all, all this positive feedback, so he was like, okay, well, let me try and see what I think. He primarily just plays Destiny. That's his favorite game. He is a Destiny fanboy, okay? As soon as you get done with your prologue, this uh, screen pops up explaining to you uh, the different tier system, for your difficulty, and that there's four classes, yada, yada, yada. At the top of the screen, the top left of the screen, they had the audacity, the audacity to put eyes up, Outriders. Eyes up, Outrider. That is the catchphrase from Destiny. Destiny coined Eyes Up Guardian. That was literally the very first word spoken at the very first scene in Destiny 1. That has been a huge calling card for Destiny. People get tattoos that say Eyes Up Guardian. This is hugely plagiaristic that they would go and take something from Destiny like their catchphrase and try to coin that as their own. That is disrespectful. That is disrespectful on a creative level that they would do that. And nobody is saying anything about that. Well, guess what? Not today. I am stepping up and I am saying that is some BS. They should not be doing that. They can come up with their own freaking catchphrase. All right. I'm not even a Destiny fan and I'm mad because I do not like the idea of a creators plagiarizing from other creators. That is a just... Beyond disrespectful. Beyond disrespectful that they did that. Okay? And I even had my husband take a picture of it. He threw it on his Twitter. And then I went ahead and I reposted it to my Twitter. Because that is BS. And people should see that they did that. What else did they steal from Destiny blatantly? Okay? It's okay to be inspired by games. I say that all the time. You can be inspired by games. But do not steal. Do not steal. They stole a catchphrase. What else may have they stolen now in this game? Because now I'm going to go in this game, you know, thinking that they stole a lot of things. Because they did it once already in the very beginning. How do I not know that they haven't stole other things? It's just terrible. It's... (sighs) I'm, I'm, I'm just livid. I can't believe they did that. I just cannot believe that they did that. I feel that this game is also, if you've played Bulletstorm, Bulletstorm is this fast paced, high action um, shooter, right? I feel like Outriders is a watered down, shitty version of Bulletstorm. Like they took all the awesomeness and then they somehow made it crap, okay? it's. My husband made a quote uh, when he was telling me his opinion. And this is what he said. He says, this game is trying to sell you on violence with all the flash, but no substance. That was, those were his words. They're selling you on violence with all the flash, but no substance. And I agree with him because I was, I've had time to play this. And I've had time to sit back and think about what I've seen. And at first, you know, there were things that I thought, oh, this is really cool. This is kind of fun. But then it got old because you do it so often and it got played out. And then I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, they, they are making you way too strong. They're going for super violence right off the gate. But then there's nothing. There's no substance to it. I agree with him. There's no substance to it. You're just overly powerful to be overly powerful. I also want to add an issue that I had encountered that I didn't even know this game had. And that was the balancing between players. 
I didn't notice it at first because my friends and I, we had a, a squad of three and we played the demo from start to finish. So we were leveling up together. So I didn't notice any issues. I noticed the issue when I took my level seven trickster and I brought him into my husband's game that he had just started. The game instantly leveled him up to a level 5. It leveled him up to a 5. He has no gear, no armor, but now his skills are at a level 5 and he's just having no issues with any of his enemies. He's not getting the same experience playing this game that he should be at the level 1 or 2 that he was. This is a huge flaw. When other players come into your game and your levels don't match, okay, if they're coming in your game and they are higher than you, the game should reduce their level to match your level. They should bring you down because this is your game. You need to, you know, you need to, you know, move your way up. Adversely, if you are the low level player and you're joining somebody else's game, and their high level, uh, their higher level. I could understand them them wanting to balance you to bring them up to their level, so you're not just getting decimated on the battlefield. They didn't do that. Instead, they did the opposite. They had me, a high level character, enter a low level game, and they took the low level people and they boosted them up. Why would you do that? He didn't get to experience the game everybody the way that everybody else experienced the game. He was already, you know, almost max level in the very beginning. He was one-shotting everybody. Why did they do that? Why? This, this is this is just completely wrong. They should not have done that. And I'm happy that, I, that you know I took I didn't make a new character when I joined him. I took my pre-made one that was array level seven because if I hadn't done that, we wouldn't have noticed this huge error that that is that they did with the balancing of the players. He didn't get the full demo. You know what happened after we got through the beginning part, where you know he's in the badlands. And he has to, you know, fight his first wave of enemies and get guns. And, he, you know, you level up. We, I, we got through that. We got to Rift Town. He got one quest to go. And remember, the, and there's the quest where you have to go and you fight that altered boss with the lightning. We did that. Turn that in. That was the end of his demo. He didn't get any other missions. They gave him the mission where you call when you go to talk to Jacob at the end and you get the thank you for playing. You shouldn't get that until you're level seven after you've done all the other missions. He played one mission after getting to the town. And now he's done. Because they leveled him up and they and I guess the game perceived that he had done everything, I guess. I don't understand why that happened, but it happened. So in him, instead of him getting four boss fights like everybody else, he got one. And then his demo ended. What the F? What the F? Huge fail. Huge fail! My opinion. This game, people are going to play it. Some are going to love it. That's fine. Whatever. Not everybody is as critical as I am. I personally believe, since this game is so linear, people are going to fly through this campaign super fast. They're going to get to the end. And then what? What do they have to keep them playing this game? Nothing. Nothing. If the loot stays at the the state that it is in the demo, the people who care about getting all the cool stuff, they're not going to stick around for the game because there isn't anything for them to really work for. So you're going to lose those players. I expect this game to be dead. Relatively quickly. Everyone's going to jump in. They're going to have a huge player base. They will. They're going to have a huge player base when this game launches. But I expect most people 
are probably going to have this game all the way done within the first month. Maybe even less. And then they're going to have nothing to do. Some of them might like it enough, and they'll play through it again with another uh, class character. Most people won't do that. Most gamers don't have that kind of time and patience. They'll fly through it with their one class that they like, and they're going to move on to the next game. That's what's going to happen. There isn't anything there to keep you there. There's nothing. Even if they uh, somehow make the story a lot better, it's still going to be short because it's so linear, you just fly through it. Like, we went from level 0 to level 7 really fast. And as you're leveling up and you go through these tiers for difficulty, these tiers are leveling up super fast. I've played other games where you have a tier system like this for your difficulty. Like, Diablo does that. Okay, you go and you play through. You have to usually wait until you hit your max level, let's say 50. And then you can start changing, I think they call them nightmare modes or something, or demon modes or something like that in Diablo. And then and once you hit max level, then you can start increasing to these other like uh, like these other nightmarish modes to make it harder and harder and to increase your uh, probability of your loot. Anthem even did it. You you had to you know you could increase the stuff as well with a different tier system. But it was recommended that you wait until you were max level and then you would do it. This game is literally going up in tier and increasing your loot chance as you're leveling up. You hit five different, you go through five tiers, five difficulty tiers in this demo. You're only a level seven, a level seven, and you've already gone through five difficulty tiers. What the F? What the F? Are you trying to rush us through this game? You know? Are you making these tiers, like, worthless? Like, they don't mean anything? We're not going to get anything good? These these tiers are so bad that you're going to literally move to the next one after one level up? There's no substance, people. When I move up in a tier, I should notice a big change. I should be dying a lot more. It sh- you know, it should have a huge impact. We were literally going up in tier... And I didn't notice any change in difficulty. They're watered down. Why have all these tiers then? You might as well just had one tier. You know, and you could have called the casual for all I care. And you could have kept us there. You know, and then you could have, you know, more tiers later on as we get higher up. But you're just flying us through these tiers. Like they're nothing. Because they are nothing. This game is a huge disappointment to me. Huge disappointment to me. And people ask if I'm going to buy this game. I told my friends that I am going to get it. Because they like it and they want to play it. And I want to play something with them. But I am not buying this game. I refuse. This game is not worth it to me. This game is nothing but a watered down knockoff that is stealing. They blatantly plagiarized. And it's just lazy writing. And I just can't. I can't with this game. I am not going to give them the satisfaction of paying them when I'm calling them out on their on, on their on their crap. Okay. I am renting this game. I have Game Lock through GameFly, which means when this game releases, I will get it. I will not have to wait six months. I will get this game on release day through GameFly through Game Lock. I already have it set up. I am renting this game. I'm going to play it with my friends. I expect us to be done with this game within like two, three weeks. And then we will probably move on. And I will have saved myself 60 bucks. That's how I feel about this game. I feel it's overhyped. People are overlooking all these things, all these flaws. I feel... Gamers have been in such a dry spell for so long because there hasn't been any major huge games that have come out since November. November. That's four months. That's four months with no big games. 
Yeah, you've had some small ones like Astros Player Room and whatnot. But you hasn't had you haven't had any major games in four months. You are all desperate for anything that is you know that shows you an inkling of amazingness. So you are being blown away by special effects, but the writing is absolute trash. The sci-fi is absolute trash. The guns are absolute trash. This game is trash. That's how I feel. You are, like I said, you can feel however you want to feel. I'm not telling you how to feel, but this is how I feel. This game is not worth my money. I am renting it. I hope you guys enjoyed my rant. I hope you guys enjoyed my insight. Feel free to think about what you've heard. Do you want to, you know, share your opinion? I'm open to it. Just keep it civil. All right, we don't need to debate it. We can we can talk about it, you know, cordially. Thank you guys for listening. Recommend me to all your friends and family. Have them check out the show. Come check out my Twitch channel. Love to have you. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for stopping in.